One way to benchmark code is to measure how long it takes to execute. Using the standard clock functions to take time differences might be okay in some circumstances, but for accurate measurement, it is lacking. For that, we turn to the microbenchmark library from the CRAN. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use microbenchmark to accurately measure how long it takes a block of code to execute, and we'll compare equivalent but different blocks of code. So if we have more than one way to perform the same thing, we might want to see which one performs the best. So let's do a library microbenchmark to bring it into our workspace. And now before I get to the code uh, you see above, let's do a simple example to see how this works. Now one thing we can do, I'm going to create a variable x for our example. Now suppose I wanted to multiply x by 32. Well, I could just do x times 32 and I get the result. Now an equivalent way of doing this is doing a bitwise shift. So a bitwise shift left of, on x of 5. Because 2 to the power of 5 is 32, so if we do a bitwise shift left by 5, it's the same thing as multiplying by 32. And if we hit enter, we see that we do get the same result. Now this was a common optimization we used to carry out in assembly code or in C code, where we just use the shift operator on the register, and we get a more performant way of multiplying by a power of 2 or 2 to the power of x. Now, if we'd like to see what happens in R if we do this, so let's benchmark this using microbenchmark, and then we give it uh, the two statements. So we have x times 32, and bitwise shift left, x to the 5. So if we run it and see if the shift left is better to do a bitwise shift or a straight multiplication by 32, we see that, well, if we look at the mean value, the average value, or even the min value, the multiplying by 32 is much faster than doing this bitwise shift left. So it is not an optimization in R, and R is probably not optimized for it uh, because of the way things are going on under the hood. So it's not like we're applying this bitwise shift on the registers themselves. So if you're thinking that this might be an optimization, then just don't do it. Stick to this x times 32 in this case. So that's a simple example to see how microbenchmark uh, works in its basic case. So let's look at the code above. I'm going to clear my uh, console window, and we'll look at the code I have here. So I bring in three libraries, dplyr, sqldf, and microbenchmark, and I'm going to run a microbenchmark on comparing these three methods that take, carry out the same thing. So we're working on the MTCARS data set, and what we're going to do is we're going to group the cars by cylinder, and we're going to take the average or the mean miles per gallon per cylinder. So what we need to do is group by cylinder and then summarize it based on the mean miles per gallon. So in this first one, we use the dplyr method for doing it. Then we use the basic or the base library data frame methods for doing it using the aggregate function. So we have to take the aggregate of the miles per gallon based on or by the cylinder, and we use the mean function as our aggregate function. And then finally, the SQL DF library lets us operate on built in on the RS data frames like we would in a SQL database. So we pass the string, select SIL average MPG from MT cars. So SQL DF is smart enough to know that this MT cars is a data frame, and we group by cylinder. Now, one of the things I'd like to talk about when talking about dplyr is how the grammar is very similar to SQL and how I like that attribute. Well, if I like the grammar of SQL, why don't I just use this SQL DF function? Well, one of the reasons why is performance. And we're going to run this benchmark to compare the performance of these three methods and to see why I don't use SQL DF uh, for regular use and why I usually turn to dplyr. So let's do a control shift S, and that will run this code loading it into our console here. So now that it's completed, we can see that we have, uh, there's a few messages here that hasn't affected the results. So if we look up here at our global environment, we do have this res, which contains the results of our micro benchmark. So if we just type in res, we should see how the three have performed. So if we look at the three expressions, there's a similar uh, performance or similar time that dplyr and the base data frame method took. 
But the SQL DF method took much longer, an order of magnitude longer than the dplyr function. So that's why I don't use it. It takes much longer. And you'll notice that the base uh, data frame library is a little bit quicker than dplyr, but we're only, we're working in milliseconds here. So it is a bit quicker, but sometimes we'll take that trade off just because dplyr is that much easier to use. So that's one example of something we might use microbenchmark for to compare methods like we have here and to rule out things uh, that are much, much slower, uh, much less efficient than uh, other methods. And that concludes this introduction to benchmarking our code with the microbenchmark library.